Oh, hello. I was going through the spell manual yesterday and stumbled across this gem of a spell. I was apprehensive casting this meatball of an incantation, but the red wizard is just so convincing. Do it. Oh, whatever you say, buddy. Uh-oh. Oopsies. Hello, folks, and welcome to Dice Chatter. What you see before you is my attempt at a ruined medieval home. Much of my inspiration for this build has come from my dear friend Leif over at Devs and Dice. His terrain builds are top-notch, and I wanted to improve on my own creations. So I figured I'd borrow... You mean steal? Uh, well, I guess I'll steal some ideas from him and hopefully import some of my own wisdom into this structure. With all that being said, let's jump right into the build. For a larger terrain piece like this, I like to gather up supplies and get everything prepared. As I get some bricks, balsa wood, and the base ready to go, I'll post a number of measurements on the screen now. If you want to copy this build, take these numbers down, pause the video, do whatever you need to do. As I continue to get prepared, I want to mention a few things about the thought process of this build. Not everything is going to be to scale. I want to use this ruined home in tabletop miniatures games. I want minis to be able to climb up rubble, stand on broken floorboards, fire arrows out of windows, and fit through doors. This may mean some pieces of the terrain build may be a bit exaggerated, but that allows us to create a proper terrain piece, not just a pretty site blocker. At this point, we have most of our supplies cut and scoured up. Let's build a basic foundation. The peel and stick floor tile I use is too smooth to allow good glue adhesion, so we have to scratch the base up. This will allow some of the glue to settle and create a better connection. For the main supports, I have five balsa wood posts that I've marked out to varying lengths. Two of these will reach up through the three floors of this creation. I make sure to label them and place these posts in the correct spots. Also, try to make sure that these posts are as straight and level as they can be. This will reduce the chance of any major issues occurring later in the build. The walls are next, at least for the first floor. I wanted to create variation between the bottom and top floors of this building, so I decided to make the first floor walls stone bricks. I figured they would have used the most sturdy and heavy building material on the bottom floor. I cut out some chipboard and cut it to size and dry fit it between each wooden pillar. It is also a good idea to plan out what you want to put on each wall. Maybe one has a door, another windows, and of course you need a couple walls ruined and destroyed. Once this is planned out, so begins bricking each of our four walls. Take your time, no need to make it neat and perfect. It is a ruined building after all. Make sure you leave some room for the door frame and of course some windows. For the windows, by the way, I have a filament 3D printer, found some free windows online and scaled them up to the size of the build. For a filament printer, they will do the job and no one will notice any layer lines in the end product. Now that the bricks are finished, we also need a good looking inside wall. I took some coffee stir sticks and thought it would look nice to create wooden paneling that goes up and down the inside of the walls. For the walls that have not been beaten and broken down, I cut these sticks to the proper wall height, while the ruined sections, I just snapped them where I saw fit and glued them in place. Keep in mind, there are ways to make this build, well, less arduous. You could speed up the creation by making each floor the same style and texture, but I'd argue you should push yourself and your creative capabilities to see what you can truly come up with. Have a good time with it, and I'm sure you will be impressed with the finished product. For the base of this ruined home, I went a simpler route. It's just gonna be rubble and a dirt floor. I figured the rest of the build was going to have intricately placed bricks and panels. Why not just make the floor as basic as they come? We have some play sand, PVA glue, and water mixed up in a goop concoction, and we just paint the floor, the outer edges, and any other little cracks or openings we want to fill up with this goopy concoction. With the base of the build done, I'd argue that things are starting to come along. It definitely looks like a ruined and beaten down building. For the top two floors, we'll cut out the walls using that dollar store foam board. No need to peel off the paper, just leave it on and use it as a good drawing and cutting guide. Of course, cut it out to shape and double check everything slides into place. Before I really dive fully into the walls, well, we have to finish the floor. 
Just as I did with the first floor inner walls, these coffee stir sticks will do a great job supporting minis that make their way up to the second floor, and they will look great once everything has been painted up. Alright, let's focus back in on the walls for the upper floors. We have two main walls to tackle since the other two are destroyed and, well, missing. So we have a couple areas where we can focus on some strong details. Add in some windows, maybe a corner or two of the walls are missing, or take it a step further and create a medieval bay window of sorts that protrudes out, giving the terrain build a bit more pizzazz. Also, it can make for a fun spot to put a miniature and cast spells down at some unsuspecting foes. Also, make sure to add another coffee stir stick floor for the uppermost level. Everything here takes a bit of time and planning, but I would say this building is really starting to take shape. The roof is a fun one and definitely where I had the most trouble. This is mainly because I didn't want to do the typical A-frame style of roof. I wanted to try out a more pyramid style of sorts. And holy hell, I had a rough time. Even coming up with what I thought was an ingenious idea of taping the stir sticks to some electrical tape and marking off the cut lines, things still didn't line up as well as I wanted. Balsa wood is an awesome building tool for terrain, but if you want exact cuts, balsa wood just isn't perfect. A little patience and knowing that these shingles would cover up any imperfections helped me push through this process. Oh yeah, and the, uh, the shingles that I'm putting on, they're also just cut out from a cereal box. I made a point to not have all of them be the exact same size. Variation will make your roof look like a hot mess, but we don't want perfection for this ruined medieval home. Also, don't forget to add in some more goop around the build. Throw it in some corners or any other area where you feel it won't mess up any miniatures trying to balance. And of course, we just texture the outside walls with some Vallejo sand texture paste. This stuff will work wonders in creating a stucco look for the outside walls. And with all of these steps complete, we have an awesome looking terrain build. We are ready to prime and paint this monster of a creation. I figure you all have seen someone prime a piece of terrain and then Zenithal highlight it with a white ink. If not, well, I'm sorry. I skipped filming that step. For the rest of the base coating, I continue to use my airbrush to throw on a brown ink. I cover everything with this coat of paint. Keep in mind, medieval homes were made with rocks, stones, wood, dirt, and the fecal matter of their neighbor. So why not cover everything with a steamy load of brown? <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, once this is dried, we can tackle other sections of the build, like the roof. I wanted to go for more of a brown, orange, and red coloration. A good old classic clay slab roof. I figure it will contrast well with the wood, the stone, and the wall colors, which we will jump on over to now. The stones on the first floor I decided to go with your typical gray theme. Later we will add some wash and grime to these stones to make them stand out. For the upper story walls, I decided to go with a classic beige. This will help balance out the light and the dark themes for this building and give us a good canvas to start making this medieval home look extra gross. We can tackle this by doing a couple things. Initially, we can get the stone bricks and a few other random spots on the build covered in a black wash. This can really help with shadows and give the bricks more depth. And after that wash dries, we can use the airbrush again to add in some green and brown around the build. Focus on areas where you feel water would pool up, causing mold and life to grow. I would say this step, adding grime and detritus over the walls and flat areas of the building is almost a must do, especially if you want your terrain to give off that been sitting here for a while kind of vibe. Once again, let everything dry, and then I just hit the entire terrain build with a light dry brush with an off-white. Don't go as heavy as I did in some areas. Take your time, do multiple passes if you have to, and make your build stand out. Oh, and uh, one other thing. Take a white ink, some blood for the blood god, maybe even some Nurgle's rot, and just go around your build and give it some character. Add an oozing wall, a demonic sacrificial circle, or maybe a note about that one guy named Jim who was here. After all of these finishing touches, this terrain build is finally complete. There you have it folks, my first ruined medieval home. 
This build has been a long time coming, and I'm really excited to get this one on the table and use it in any sort of fantasy tabletop games. So excited, in fact, that I ended up making, well, two buildings. I hope you all enjoyed the build, and I'd love to see your creations. Hop on over to the Discord to share your work and chat with me and some very nice people. Also, don't forget to do all the other socials. Check out the Patreon if you'd like to support my work financially, comment, like, and subscribe. It truly does help out the channel more than you know. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.